Okay, so I've, hand, I've handed out uh, the 10 worst things I've done. <laughs> so I want you to be on the lookout for anything that you see uh, that's not working on that interview. So I'm going to start at the door. Okay. okay. Good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good. Just wanted to let you know the interview started at uh, three fifteen. Oh, so you're a little I, late today. I, I figured being on time wasn't all that important. I, I don't need to be on time, do I? Attendance and time is a big uh, part of the job here. Oh, so. oh okay. Sorry. That's Sorry. All right. You know things happen. Oh, yeah. So we'll jump right in. We'll start with the interview. Uh, I received your resume. It looks fairly well. Uh, so let's start off with, tell me about yourself. What do you want to know? Whatever you wish to share. Well, you know, I can't tell you too much. Yeah. Well, well share whatever you think would help uh, me to help decide. Well, all right. I'm, I'm 42 years old. I have three kids, and I have a dog. Okay. And what are your stronger weakness, weaknesses? Well, I have a hard time getting up in the morning, as you can tell. It was, man, man, I just, I just set the alarm wrong, and then I woke up later. Then, but so I guess that's not really a strength, huh? Um, I guess my strength might be to, um, what, when I do get to work, I do, I do work, good work. Okay, yeah. So you're saying you're a team player and you work hard? Well, I can't say that I'm a team player. I don't necessarily like everybody on my team. I. You know, you, you can't like everybody, so. Alrighty, uh, so why should we hire you? I don't know. Because uh, <laughs> I need a job. Okay. I, I need the money. Uh, but I got fired from my last job, so I, I really do need to get a job as soon as possible. All right. Could you tell me why you were fired? <sighs> well, I, I was a little too pushy and the customers started to complain, you know, and you know, you can't you can't make customers happy. They're always complaining about something and so and then my boss, my god, my boss was just in my face all the time. Finally, I just told him off. That did it. Uh, what could you contribute to the company? Hmm. Um, well, when I'm here, I'm here. And uh, I I like to to help people as long as they're they're nice uh, if they're not nice then I I have nothing to offer uh, do you think you could be a good manager oh yeah yeah I like telling people what to do so. <laughs> and lastly what are you looking for in a job well number one pay I gotta I gotta have a decent salary um, I'm also looking for a job that that I don't have to stay late and I don't have to get up early <laughs> Alrighty, well thank you for your time. Thank you. And I will let you thank know you. if uh, we would like you for the position. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> now, what are some things that I could improve on? Everything. Everything. <laughs> okay. Now, if I came in for an interview in a management position, should I be wearing this? No. No. No, absolutely not. I sprained my foot, so therefore I'm wearing flat shoes. But I should be wearing heels uh, appropriately uh, sized. And as we talked about, as, as the folk, other folks talked about, some jobs, ladies, they're very conservative, and they want either a suit or a dress with a jacket. Uh, so you want to check out the place to make sure the cl what are the clothing ethics. Also, um, they, the, one of the questions was, having a beard. Do all jobs allow guys to have beards? No. no. Can, you, can you name some jobs that probably would not allow that? I know one. Front desk service agent at a hotel. Okay. Restaurant. Restaurant. What else? These are, I'm sorry? Possibly. Possibly. Uh, when I worked for Women and Infants Hospital, guys could not have beards. Okay. I couldn't even wear open-toed shoes, and I didn't even work in the hospital. I worked in a side office, and yet they said no. So there are certain things that, depending on where you work, 
uh, you want to check those things out. Uh, so we're going to be talking about investigating types of interviewing skills and styles and things like that. So now we're going to switch things into more, a little more serious. And you can ask me anything you want. And then what I want you to do is also think of some answers that you could give. So we do the questions so that we can yeah. see them. Yeah. All right. So you're on time. I'm on time. She's on time this time. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start off with tell me about yourself. All right. And that is a tough question, right? Yeah. How long should your answer be? Thirty seconds. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when I'm I, uh, on the occupational therapy floor, I give them a thirty second. They close their eyes and they sit for thirty seconds. It seems like an eternity. It just goes on and on and on. But thirty seconds is enough to give your information, hold their attention, and uh, you're not boring them. When you see their eyes wandering or they're drawing pictures. You've gone too long, way too long. So the tell me about yourself really is the resume. So you could actually say, as you can see from my resume, I am a current uh, a student or current graduate from Bristol Community College. In that program, I studied and give them some examples of what you'd studied. Previous to that, you want to talk about the job, maybe the job that you held before. If you haven't held a job before, just stick with the college. The college is your job. And so you could say, uh, some of the coursework I took that is related to the job that I apply, I'm applying to are this, this, and this. And even on your resume, you, if you have a lot of space, you could throw in some of the courses that you took and some of the, the types of activities you may have done at the college and so on. All right, and what are your strong and weak points okay. about you? When I first, this was again 100 years ago, when I applied to the college here, they asked me that question. There were 20 people sitting in a circle, you know, throwing questions at me. And uh, I had interviewed enough, and I, I can't stress this enough, I had interviewed enough that things were more natural. If it's your first interview, you're going to struggle with answers because they're not kind of embedded in your head at this point, they're new. But the tell me about your strengths and weaknesses, what came to me on that interview was the fact that, and it came out of my mouth, I wasn't paying attention, but I said, well, my strengths are, I've applied for this job because it is my strength. And in my, and so I went on to t t talk about the different things that I'm bringing to the job based on their job description. If you have a job description from this job, it's, a, it's your perfect cheat sheet it, because it tells you what they need to know, what you can bring to the job. Now, I didn't talk about weaknesses and somebody in the, in the group still wanted to know my weaknesses. And again, what came to me was the fact that sometimes I want more for the students than they want for themselves. And that came to me because that's one of, the, one of the difficulties of working for students is that you can see what their potential is, but you can't always force it. It has to come by itself. And I said, well, my weakness is I want more for the students than they want for themselves. But when I was in school, in grad school, they taught me that everybody has their own path and all you can do is encourage them. So I turned a weakness into a strength. But all of this has to be, in a sense, you. It has to come from you and how you say it. But most of us, would we apply for a job that we're not good at? Probably not. So turn that statement into, well, I applied for this job because it is one of my strengths. Just turn it around, but make it your own words. Uh, and in that, in that case, it should be the truth that you did apply for a job. If you ever lie on an answer, most of us are lousy liars, <laughs> and it's going to show. So g give them the truth. Okay, give me another question. What are you looking for in a job? Okay, I should then have that job description. Okay, if, and some places give lousy job descriptions, then what you have, uh, what I would do is go on to like monster.com or one of these dot coms, put in 
or the, one of the, one of the uh, sites that I showed you, put in that and find out what normally a person would do. And if those are the things that you feel that you can do, turn it into a statement of these are, I applied for this job because it requires this and this and this. Something that, uh, actually let me write something down for you. Something that I always work on in terms of uh, like a group process are the three skills that we all have. Every job you apply for has at least two of those skills. In my job at the college, people skills and coordinating information. I don't have much technology skills. I can break things, so <laughs> you don't want me to deal with the technology. But definitely the people skills. Now, uh, what are you applying for in the future? Uh, the immediate future uh -huh. after this, uh -huh. uh, probably uh, the city councilman. Okay, as a city councilman, absolutely people skills. Keep your knowledge in your, in your forefront because your people are going to be asking you questions. Probably some computer skills. So everything, when they say, what are you looking for in a job? Take those three things, break it down into the job description that you have, and word for word, put it into one of those categories. And what it's going to do is help you to keep organized on why am I applying for this job and what am I bringing to the job. Okay. Uh, why should we hire you? Okay. You c and that's a tough one. Uh, you can't say, because I'm good. Yeah. What you could do is say, well, I don't know what, what skills your other applicants have. However, and then do the three, three things again. Uh, in terms of dealing with the public, uh, I feel like I can, I can help them with, with issues, and I'm really good at making sure that information is accurate, and I'm really good at computers and computer information. So again, you're rehashing those three things, all kinds of different words, but that's really what you're, what you're going for. That I was looking at. Oh, how long are you planning on staying with us? That's a tricky question. Why is that a tr why how long are you planning to stay with us a tricky question? I know that. Yeah. Uh, one of the things with, that I know is being asked for that is you don't know where you're going to be in X amount of months, weeks, days, years. Um, and then sometimes you don't want to say that it's an in-between job. Like I know when I applied for the hotel, they asked me that. And I said, you know, I plan on staying here for at least two years because, you know, it's going to give me time to finish up my degree. When I get my degree, I'm still going to have to find another job. So I kind of gave them that two-year mark. That's where I want to be. That's how long I want to stay. Mm -hmm. But I didn't use it as the excuse. On, oh, I'm just using it just as a job for right now until I get my degree to leave. So, yeah. so giving them a time frame. Would that reflect on them hiring? It might. If they want somebody forever and ever, it might say, hey, he's gone after he gets his. In your head, uh, you may be saying, I'm gone. But you, you also may want to say, as long as I'm, useful, I'm a useful and, and productive employee here. So be careful that they don't get afraid. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I got the, this was years ago, I got the, um, how long do you plan to stay here? Uh, or, and what are your future goals while you're here? And I said, I, well, I would really like to work up in management. And she said to me, we don't move up. <laughs> I knew I was dead. Yeah, I just blown the interview. So, but you don't know these things. And so you ha what it takes is practice. And if, it, if your interview is blown because you said something, that was very honest with you, then you may not even want to work there in the first place. I was apparently intimidating her and basically saying, I want your job. And so <laughs> you, you, have to, you have to be very careful about that. Uh, what, what could I have said in terms of time frame? Uh, where would I like to be in the next? Usually the question is, where would you like to be in the next five years? What might be some of your suggestions for that? 
Any thoughts on that? What was the question? Where, where would you like to be in the next five years? Have my own company. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts? Right. Again, the uh, yes. I would definitely bring up the fact that you are going to be graduating or will be graduating from school and or continuing for another degree because that will definitely show that you know you are determined to get your degree and graduate and or move on to another degree. So, okay. so be, and be careful that their job is to hire somebody to save them money. Okay, so if you are looking as if you you're continuing your school but you may stay put there that looks good because you are really actually being it's a, a business phrase called value added I am bringing value to this job by who, who I am and what I can do and so uh, they always want to know basically can, can can I save money on you by not having to hire somebody else um, and if you if they feel that you're a job hopper you know that, and it may be a short-term job, and that's fine with them. Other times, uh, they may say, uh, "He's not going to stay long enough here." So they won't hire if if, he, if they know that he's not going to stay for that long. They will they will try to get somebody else. Yeah, they may very. You already lost this. Yeah, they may very well do that. If they liked him a lot, yeah. they may they may in their heads say, "He's an asset to us right now." And we're hoping that we can do things to keep him here. So, yeah, yeah. It's how you come across on the interview that that is so crucial. That uh, sometimes they'll we like actually at the college here. One of the first jobs I took here, we were looking for a secretary, and we were interviewing a student who had come in. And what I liked about her was they they told her this is this is going to be a grant funded program. In other words, it's going to last maybe a year, maybe two years, that's it. What she came back was, that's fine. I, can, I know that I can learn an awful lot when I'm here. That says, she's got a good attitude, positive attitude that no matter how long the job is, she's going to add something to it. And so I, you know, immediately I said, ah, she's the one. She's, she's energetic. Uh, very positive about things and and I thought well she she would make a great secretary for us because she she's also going to treat students well and the people coming in okay um, Any two more. Uh, how would you evaluate your last employer okay now do we badmouth our last employer no <laughs> what goes into their head if I badmouth them exactly so if I badmouth my employer it may be true but if I badmouth the employer, then I'm, I'm really saying, nah, I'm going to badmouth you next. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it is very important. Now, what if my employer and I didn't get along? What do I say? Um, one thing that I would think of is taking the negative experiences that you had from the previous job and turning it into a positive. Mm -hmm. uh, like for me, I do know that I had you know, a bad employer at one time, but even through that, it taught me to be how to communicate to another person by different means. So instead of addressing it head on, like you know, I would slowly address the problem yeah. baby steps. So it taught me something in the process. Yeah. And sometimes this is, it's a hard, it's a tough subject. Sometimes you were just laid off because there was a whole pile of you getting laid off. Boy, you're, you're home free then. But when it is a personality issue, you could, sometimes if you're careful, you have to play it by ear, you could say, well, this was a mismatch. Uh, he, he and I just kind of agreed to disagree. And I needed to find something, uh, a, a position where I could really grow in and just leave it like that. You could tie it into something more positive and say, I, even though it was a difficult situation at the time, I look at it as something that really made me more positive and helped me to work harder at my next job. So turn the negative into a positive as soon as you can. Any other questions? The last one, uh, could you be a good manager? Okay. Now, do your people, people information technology skills again. As a manager, what are some of the things I need to bring into my skills? Pardon?
they can teach her, like, well, if she has everything here, she can. Exactly. She'll, he can, uh, that means that that person will keep everything in place. So good organization is one of them, definitely. As a manager, you're juggling all the time. <laughs> um, Communications. Now, can we nail down the word communications even further? People skills. People skills. Uh, how would I? How would you like to be treated? If I pick on you for a minute. <laughs> I like to be treated the way anybody else would be treated. How is that? Respect. Okay. And anything else? Kindness. Kindness. Fair. Pardon. Fair. Fair. Yep. Yeah. Now, some people will want fair in certain ways as long as it, it suits me. <laughs> and some people want fair, everybody treated fair. It's, it's an issue that um, when you look at your own life and you look at the way you may have been treated in the past, sometimes it's, it's turning those words into something that's, that doesn't say, well, I wasn't treated fair and therefore you know, everybody else is a jerk because I didn't get treated fair. But so it, it, is, it is finding good times when you were very happy with a person. Like right now I have this wonderful boss, Michael. And I told Michael, I said, I love working for you because even when you say no to my request, I don't feel bad. Because Michael gives me a, the reason I'm, I'm saying no it, and gives me a good piece of information of what I needed to know because he had to say no. That's respectful because that says I'm able to handle it. I'm not going to blow up. But on the other hand, I, I earned the respect to find out what it is that I, I can't do. And so sometimes it is, it is wording that into what, what is a good manager? A good manager is respectful and is able, even in having to say no, they can do it in a way that that person doesn't feel as if they're being slighted. So uh, a good manager is hard to find sometimes. Anything else? Okay. I think those are usually the top questions. Okay. Asked. Now what do I do um, when the interview is over? Shaking the hand. Okay. Yeah. Like, or, time okay. And even that, yeah. Now shaking hands before probably is good shaking hands afterwards. Go to your neighbor here and shake their hands. Let's do a shake hand test. <laughs> under, the ten, under the ten worst things, is the handshake a bad thing? They've actually done studies on handshakes and it's actually, it was a sales study on if I touch you not badly, but if I touch you, there's a physical connection there. And a good handshake says, I want to be here. I am committed to doing a good job. In the workshop, they also talked about web to web. Your web to their web. Yeah. So, yeah. And we're not breaking their hand, but we're saying, I want to be there. Now, what if you're a sweater? <laughs> Yeah, bring some tissues There's with you. There's also chalk out there that will help. Ah, yeah, if you're a gymnastic person, you've got some chalk there that you can put your hands on. But sometimes it is just keeping a Kleenex. If you, if you sweat bullets, then keep something to keep, keep dry um, because the other person is not going to want something out of, out of the um, sink, so to speak. Uh, another thing when you are when you're doing an interview is to think about, do I want to work with them? Your radar should be on. This is why I tend to, on the, on the uh, talking about the Myers-Briggs and those things, your gut instinct is so important that can you pick up something that says, uh, something's not quite right. And your brain doesn't know what to do with it, but your heart says, Something's not quite right. This is a strange place. And so sometimes you need to go home and just kind of ch uh, chill out, literally, and think, what was bothering me about that interview? We pick up a lot of stuff. Question? Question? Yeah. That's a great way because even when, you, when they interview you, you're doing the same thing in your mind that you them. Exactly. It is a two-way street. Do I want them to work for me? Do they? Do they want to work here? Uh, 
And what I like about the two career assessments is they help you to rate the environment you're going to work in because your environment definitely should match who you are. Uh, and one of the reasons where uh, I changed jobs, I was doing the exact job I love to do, but the place didn't match me. And so each one of us has to, oh, what they used to say, and working at women and infants, they had some interesting phrases. One of them was a come to Jesus meeting, <laughs> which meant you have to sit down and think about, come to terms with yourself. Is this a good place? Your head is going to say, yeah, but look at the money. And your heart is say, not a good match. Yep, your head is arguing with you. And so taking time to calm down is going to be good in just kind of resolving. There's some, something funny about this place. Or this is some, when I first interviewed for the college here, it, was, it was felt right. We, I was off on, um, Durfee Street, you know that old building on Durfee Street? It's a school. It fe I felt right at home. It's 100 years, literally 100 years old, but I fe it felt good. And the people I spoke with, it felt right. And so sometimes things just fall into place because you're meant to be there. Other times, if you feel funny about it, pay attention to that. That's giving you an idea of some things that you should pay attention to. Any, uh, any other types of questions that might go into an interview? Yes? Communicating with your hand during the interview. Is there, should you be doing it under the table? Should you be up close to your chest? Should you try not to do it at all? Because I know a lot of people communicate with their hands. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of, yeah. I do. Um, and I, I, I kind of have to keep it this level when I'm really interviewing, but I like to show expression. And if you're sitting like this, you're gonna be kind of a little rigid. And so we have to be careful about it. Um, my my sister-in-law says, you should have been, I should have been Italian because <laughs> my hands go out there. But keep them down here and appropriate. Things start to fly after a while if you're, if you're not careful. But you know, hand gestures, things like that, sometimes they help to emphasize things a little bit more any questions that you wished I'd gone over that you, you didn't hear? I have, I have some questions, um, a pile of questions. You're welcome to, to take a copy of them. Um, yes? Um, is it you who should like, tell them uh, when am I going to get a call back to say if I get a job or I should wait for them to tell me or if I want, if I want to work with me, I'll give you a call in like two weeks. That's, and that's a tough question, to know the right timing to ask that. That's usually at the end of the question. Often, they will ask you, do you have any questions for us? Oh. And then you could say, uh, well, when, when do you plan to make a decision? It's, it's your right to say that. Okay. And then um, you, you, if they say, well, we'll contact you in a couple weeks, you could say, if I have some questions, could I call you? And that's perfectly fine, all right. Yeah. Good. So good question, yes. Would somebody call you uh, to interview you by phone? Mm -hmm. It's okay, I'm Jenny and blah, blah, blah. So we wanted to call you for an interview. What, what you should say by phone? So. And that's a trick. Can demonstrate that you are excited or that's something that you have to control? Well, just say, oh, oh I, I appreciate you calling me. A little bit, you know. Ah, oh, th thanks for calling. <laughs> but you know, don't don't scream. <laughs> so I appreciate that you're calling me, and yeah. I see yeah. forward to see mm -hmm. what they do. Exactly. Uh, the next segment. I'm not sure where we are on time here. Um, I'm sorry. Thirty minutes. Half an hour. Okay. Next segment. Let's talk about questions because there are several types of interview questions that you you can can be interviewed by um, that's probably a good one to go right into oh sure very very what I like and I haven't because nobody brought anything here but you know when you go into staples and you get these uh, they're like naga hide or some nice nice looking plastic Types of folders. folders. Yeah. I have one. Yeah. 
And what I like about it is some people, ask, somebody actually somebody asked me uh, last week, are we allowed to bring them in? Of course. They're allowed to bring their own stuff in. You're allowed to bring your stuff in. And so a nice folder, ah, perfect. A nice, you know, it's probably, I'm not even sure how much it cost. Uh, it cost me, I think, 10 bucks from Walmart. 10 bucks. Walmart is even yeah. better. It's okay. Nice now, as you can see, can I show them here? Yeah. Um, one side, you got a ticket. <laughs> one side, things that you want to put in there. For example, your resume. Because, you know, they may not have brought enough for everybody. So have, have several copies of your resume. Also, references. You don't want to attach your reference to the resume because it's very private. You're, you're passing out too many people's names. So keep a list of references, and if they happen to ask for it, you happen to have it. Okay. Now, what I like about the center part is uh, it's what I call my cheat sheet. It's a pad of paper with some questions that I want to ask them, and also some little notes. Now, what happens to your breathing if you're nervous? Anybody breathe? Sure. Yeah. 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 You're, you're breathing from your top of your chest rather than your diaphragm, and therefore your voice gets higher. You don't think as well. Believe it or not, you need air to think. Your air, your brain really needs air, oxygen. And the more you hyperventilate, in other words, breathe very shallowly, you're not going to start thinking very well. So it is important that. Uh, you maybe put the word breathe <laughs> on your cheat sheet here. Or if you've done your homework, which I'm going to go through again how to research a company, if you've done certain things, you, it may, you may leave yourself little notes saying, um, ask about this or talk about this. When I worked for Women and Infants Hospital, I had a friend who had a friend who I called and said, what do I need to know about the interview? And what I call the job that I was in, Switzerland, because I was in between management and union. So I had to go balance both of those areas uh, with, with the people who work there. And so what I did was I knew that they're going to ask me uh, types of, of union types of questions and what experience did I have in those. So I wrote that down. Little, little mind joggers so that it reminds you of what it is that you have to say. Now, I don't know about you, but when I get really nervous, I don't smile. And so you want to smile a little bit more. Just the word. And that will help you. Or eye contact. When I get really nervous, I look at the floor. And so I want to, anything that will improve the way you look is going to be very helpful in them being able to judge, yeah, she, she can work here because she's friendly. She can do things. Uh, now, what I want to do right now is to show you a clip on how to research a company. Before that, how many of you sit down when, you're, when you have something that you have to do that's really important, you, your mind goes through it, what you have to do? before you even do it. Anybody do that? It's called visualization. Those of you in sports, what do football players do after the game? Any thoughts? Pardon? Replayed in their mind. They also may even, re they take a video of it and they find out how they really screwed up on the field. I heard about this, um, I'm a hockey fan, and one of my favorite people, this is way back, a guy named Wayne Gretzky. And he talked about the fact that even before the game, he visualizes himself playing the game, making the goal. And I thought, wow, how interesting that is. Maybe that would work on an interview. And it's like, duh, of course. So what you want to do in a quiet moment or several moments is to just to sit down and think about, all right, I have an interview on Tuesday. What do I need to do to get ready for that interview? So what are some of the things, let's say you have an interview on Tuesday. What are some of the things that you have to do to get ready for that? 
and, and have a pad of paper next to you while you're thinking, because your best thinking comes when you're quiet. What to wear. Pardon? What, what to, to wear. wear. I'm so glad we had this little workshop here because of the fact that that is so crucial. We dress for success. Some of the comments about clothing would be, I will dress according to the job, but a notch above, just above. So if you are in a construction type of job, are you gonna wear a three-piece suit? Probably not, you're gonna scare them. <laughs> but you probably have a pair of khakis on, and maybe not sneakers, I'm gonna pick on you here. <laughs> cool sneakers though. But maybe some loafers or something like that, um, a nice shirt and maybe a tie. You're not gonna wear that on the job, but you're going, going to interview better, looking better like that. Uh, if, if you have a bank job, they're fairly conservative. So ladies, you may have to, uh, if it's a suit, uh, and let's say that you, st you stood by the bank and you walked, walked people come out, and you realize <clears throat> all the ladies are wearing dresses or suits with, with a skirt and jacket, you may want to, just for the interview, find something that is compatible to that place. Sometimes they're fine with slacks. So you have to play it by ear. Uh, do, if you, if you have the courage to do it, just stand outside on, at five o'clock and see what people are wearing. And in that way, it'll give you a better idea of, am I dressed appropriately for this job? Am I overdressed or am I underdressed? And it, when you dress well, how do you feel? Good. Yeah. When you feel good, how do you act? Yeah. It's bills on yourself. If you're applying for a job that you know you can do, you're going to feel more relaxed uh, for the most part. Sometimes we need the practice. Something I want to plug in would be that when I'm here, or if you want to come to Fall River, I am very happy to do what is called play devil's advocate. I will be your interview viewer, like you did, thank you, and throw questions at you and help you to go through the process. Uh, I'm doing that now with, with several programs. They, they are in the stage now of me reviewing their resume, me helping them with interviews. And so th my job is to help people ultimately to look better out there. And so please feel free to take advantage of that and come and see me ab about um, work working on something that, that will help you to be more employable. So you're, you're quiet, you're relaxed. What am I going to wear on this interview? How many outfits should you have? Two. Two. <laughs> Why two? That seems excessive. Try to back up in case your first one gets damaged or also a good one for a second interview. Thank you. Going. Perfect. Damaged or you get hit by a snow plow or something yeah. like that. You don't want that. But <clears throat> sometimes you will have a second interview. Now, what I liked about the, the ones that were coming through today, they, you can mix and match them. So you don't have to buy two whole new outfits. Just change the coloring a little bit. Uh, because you may have that second interview and you don't want to freak out and say, oh, I've already worn that, what am I going to do? So everything you're doing in visualization is helping you to stay calm during the actual moment. How many of you have done a dry run to the interview? What do I mean by a dry run? <clears throat> If you, if you have a friend, which I did, and she drove me to the place where I will have the interview, I got a chance to see Fall River and realize all the streets are one way. <laughs> and so I, I got prepared for that. Also look, where would I park? So I prepared for the interview before the interview. And having a good friend take you is wonderful because they, they can do the driving while you're looking around. And in a sense, pre preventing yourself from hitting somebody. Um, or also, at, back to Women and Infants Hospital, I didn't, I didn't do a drive run because it was near where I lived. And what happened was I didn't realize that there's no parking places. You have to go into a garage. I didn't have any money with me. I was, I was in big trouble. And so 
thank God I found, I have a small car, so I found this little place next to a corner, which I shouldn't have been parking at, but you know, I, I literally panicked because I realized I am not prepared. I had the right clothing, I had the right questions and all that. I didn't have any money with me. So look, look at that in terms of where will I be going? Is there parking? How will I go into that building? And all those things that you don't think about till all of a sudden you don't have it. Okay. So dry runs are really good with that. Uh, okay, now we're gonna think about questions and we're also going to think about the company. Uh, how many of you have checked out a company before you've applied? Okay. What types of resources did you use? Well, I went directly onto the website, like, because uh, when I applied to the hotel, mm -hmm. it was my first time applying into mm -hmm. a hotel, so I wanted to familiarize myself with their types of rooms that mm -hmm. they had, mm -hmm. uh, what type of company they are, who's their Great. management company, so I just wanted some back, basic background on the company, Excellent. so at least I kind of knew what I was getting into. Yeah. No, no, more knowledge you have, the more comfortable you're going to feel. You're not going to be totally comfortable, but at least uh, if they ask you the question, what do you know about us? you can use some of that information. So I'm going to show you a short clip on researching a company. Oops, let's see it. There we go. And again, um, I, I stole this from the Career Center at, at University of Illinois, but it's a great site on seeing little, little clips of movies that you can, uh, and it even t gives you free uh, handouts and those types of things. So we're going to go through seven tips on researching a company. And we need to turn the sound on. Oh. Did we turn the sound on? If I could get that or not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, perfect. Perfect. Potential employer is on the company's website to find out exactly what the product is, figuring out itself with how the company is structured. Okay, I'm going to start. Now, go. Right. Almost every company in the world, no matter how big or small they are now, has a website. Can you hear? One of the best ways to research okay. a potential employer is to visit the company's website to find out exactly what the product is. Uh, we have self with how the company is structured, delve into uh, what the staff is like, to get a good feel for the corporate culture. When someone comes in for an interview and they haven't researched our company, uh, that says to me that they're not taking that extra, quite simple step of showing the initiative, of showing the interest, and even showing the passion that they would have in our company. We're a research-based institution, and uh, if the employee or the candidate, rather, uh, ends up just fumbling the questions, and they just give us a one-line quote from the Lamington statement, we know that they haven't done enough depth of research. That's a big no-no. That's, that's an epic fail, uh, as, uh, as the term we do. Another great way of researching a company is to check if they have, if they're connected to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. You can find out pretty much just what their strategies are, who they're trying to reach out for. Um, I know a lot of companies end up using it as part of a way to recruit new staff. Have uh, Glassdoor used Facebook to reach out to new All of these are services that provide um, sometimes a little bit more intimate or inside look to the companies. Sometimes it's from the employees themselves, sometimes it's from other interns. Career fairs are such an opportunity for students to go and learn about a lot of different companies, a lot of different, you know, industries in, you know, a short time, you know, an hour or two hours, walk around, you can get a lot of business cards, you can exchange a lot of information, and you can also be turned on to companies and areas that you may not have even known existed. 
I think a great way to research a company and learn more about the people who are working there to reach out to your career center for your alumni office. I have a couple questions on my resume. I wonder if you can help me out. I was uh, pleasantly surprised with how many research tools were available to me. Use the alumni directory or alumni career program that they have. They have been working very hard to connect uh, current uh, employers to the undergrad. So reach out to them and see if they know people that are working there and they can make a connection and be their alumni at your university or eager to tell you about what it's actually like to work at a company. Finding a job is all about the connection, the networking we have. Other jobs I've ever found has come through my friends or have come through my professional network. It, it's an absolutely essential piece um, of any interview. Is the first question usually out of the box is, why do you want to work here? Or what do you know about our company? And if you can't answer that question, that's going to leave a, a bitter taste in, in the interviewer's mouth. When you're looking to uh, find a job in a new company, it's very important to understand company culture and <coughs> what the company is really up to currently. Because really understanding what the company or firm is all about will help you stand out in that interview and application process. So I've, the things that were said on there, I made copies of it, so don't sell them. But uh, this will give you a chance to use some of this information for your research. Now let's talk a little bit about types of interviews. You had talked about the phone. Uh, were you interviewed on the phone, or uh, were, was that just to set up the interview? Uh, yeah, no. When the, when the first time they called you to let you know that they wanted to interview you, mm -hmm. so how, how you, what is the best way to, you know, by like phone to tell them so okay. that I do glad that you hear about them to yeah. an interview. Yeah, okay. So, uh, but it's more like the first call, when you receive that first call, that you're going to be interviewed for. Mm -hmm. So how do you choose how this you want? So, sometimes what you, uh, let me back, go a little before that. Uh, make sure you have a phone center. Do you have children at home? What do they do with the phone? Do they Most answer the, the time, phone? they didn't answer the phone. They OK, didn't. they shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> if you have older students, you want to tell them how to answer the phone. Uh, sometimes I've called a student up and I've gotten their child and it's, yeah, who is this? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I, you, you've killed it. <laughs> so you want to train your child on how to answer the phone and how to take notes. So keep a pad of paper next to the phone and if your child is able to take a message, make sure that they write clearly, make sure they know how to write their numbers and pass on that information. So let's say you get a phone call. We'd like to have you come in to, for an interview. And so then you make sure you have a calendar next to you with all the things filled in when you can't come to an interview. The best days and times for an interview, not Monday, not Friday, where is their head on Monday and Fridays? They're not there. They're, they're gone on vacation or something. So you want to find a, get a time, interviewing time, probably not 9 o'clock because they're just getting in. 10 o'clock is good, maybe to 3. Before that, after that, they're not, they're not focused. And so you want to speak with somebody who actually knows how to interview you and to treat you well, and they're not feeling frustrated. Now, there are different types of interview setups. The first interview you have, and if you work with a large company, it's what is called a screening, and I have a list of, of types of interviews. So a screening interview is where you're talking to somebody that's probably not directly related to the job, but they're there to screen you out. It's usually a human resources. And so they just want to know, are you appropriate for the job in, in, a, in a larger idea? And so they're, 
They're going to um, maybe look at your clothing when, you're, when you are uh, being screened uh, in person. If you're being screened on the telephone, which I hate to do, but sometimes it's hard to, I don't know about you, but it's hard to interview over the phone. You can't see a face. And so you, you, in a sense, you can't read them. So if you have a phone interview, um, sometimes it's as important to take a, take a breath, get calm, and ask them. They will ask you some questions and see if you can have some questions to ask them, some quick ones, because, it's, again, it's a phone screening or in-person screening to make sure, are you appropriate for this job? Now, sometimes there's an interview where uh, you have, they're picking you because of your education. It might be because you're, and they're not allowed to do age, but it may be, are you a person who would fit into this environment? And so they're looking for uh, people who can have the energy to, to do the job and to, in a sense, stand out amongst other people. Anybody have, have had a group interview? More than one person? Have, have you ever? No. Yeah? How did you feel about it? Um, a little bit intimidating. It's, yeah. It is intimidating, yeah. especially if they, they, they don't look, look friendly. <laughs> but sometimes... No, and you said, what I'm here for, so this is an interview, why so many people? That's yeah. the things that come to yeah. your mind, so why so many people? Because sometimes, if they want to save time, they will have a person from each department that you might be involved in. And therefore, uh, for example, uh, we're looking for a, a dean of psychology and sociology. This poor person has got an all-day interview. We're taking him from one department to another. That person's going to be exhausted by the time. And it sometimes takes several days because if it's a large place, they can't do it all at once. They're going to look at you in different departments. But having Sometimes it's shorter to have all the people in one place at one time, and that's why, why they're going to do that. And sometimes you just, they want to have a different, fresh point of view to look at you and to see how will I, how will I fit into this. I like a group interview because there isn't just one face. And sometimes you don't like the face. <laughs> it's, it's hard to go on. One of my first interviews way back, I, I always said she probably would make a good po poker player. There was nothing there. And I just felt after a while I wasn't doing well because I couldn't see any emotion there. So sometimes one face is more difficult than a, than a whole group. Uh, again, telephone interviews, sometimes they, you are there just weeding out. And usually they will ask you the money question, how much do you intend to make? So make sure you do your research. That MASSCIS site really is helpful in saying what would an average person be paid. And then you play it with maybe 40% above the salary, just so that you're not starting at a really low salary. A friend of mine's uh, son just had an interview with a, with a video company. And so he, he wasn't sure what he should ask for. Uh, and I said, are you getting paid benefits? Yeah, I said. That's huge. Even though your main salary may be lower than what you're expecting, you're now getting benefits, and that brings up your salary rate. So do some research on that uh, to, to decide what type of salary should I ask for. Now, on the interview, when should the salary c question come up? Maybe towards the end. Or towards the end, yeah. You don't want to look like that's the reason why you're there, even though we all know that. But, but it, it's, you're there to make an impression, and you don't want to look like somebody who's money happy right off the bat. And so the question may be passed to HR. They may say, well, we don't have that information. You need to call HR. Or they may have a fixed salary, and, and they will tell you. But, but wait till the end, um, because then, then you're, there's a little more comfort there. Do you have to ask the loan? No. No. In fact, if you don't have to, I think it's better. Yeah. Uh, and what I've done here, 
is I've given you a list of types of interviews and some research that I, research I've already handed out that you can go by. But definitely, when they say to you, how much do you know about our company, don't say nothing. You have, you have the interview on the internet now. Um, one last thing. Um, ah, here we are. And this is stuff for you to read on your own. It's a whole list of questions that you can use. Uh, from personal questions, can they ask you real personal questions? Like how many children do you have? Or, no. no. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, they sometimes but they sometimes, why do they ask that question? How many? Yeah, they could care less how many kids you have on. Are you going to be there? Because you're going to cost them money. So quite all personal types of questions that are legal. Education, absolutely, they, they need to know about uh, your experience tied into those three areas of what you can do for them within those three areas. And future goals, have that in mind. Uh, and I, these are the questions that you might want to ask them. Now, only put down a few questions. But this should go on your cheat sheet pad <laughs> of things I want to know about this company. So do as much research as you can. And then anything you can't do, like when I, when I applied to this position, one of the questions I asked was, where is your greatest concern? It, it opened up a whole can of worms. Mm -hmm. But it was good, because I, I then asked myself, do I want to deal with that? Wasn't, wasn't a problem. Other people didn't want to. So I'm going to uh, leave these here. And uh, please feel free to take, take, if you have a friend, you have a couple copies here. And um, thanks for coming this afternoon. I appreciate you coming. And, and your questions have been excellent. So thank you.